Entangled wing. This is a front wrist grab again. Person is going to be using two hands on their wrist. Remember, one of our previous tapes. Why would somebody put two hands on their wrist? This could be a law enforcement. This is somebody of authority. If they're going to lock up one wrist, they want to take control by taking charge of the situation. I told you before that one of the scariest things that I know of is a law enforcement person. It's the only person that I know that can come up to you on the street and say, you, come with me. And they have the authority. And you actually believe, you were raised that way to believe that they're right. Well, if you're going to be a bad guy, I would think about that. You've got to use your mind in the situation. If you didn't do anything, you don't have anything to worry about. I'd never want to go anywhere with a stranger. The one's going to lock me up, I want him to do it in the presence of somebody else. I want to know my rights. How do I know my rights? Here it goes again. I've got to have knowledge. If I don't have knowledge, I'm going to be subject to all types of rules. The law works for you. You've got to know the law, though. If you don't, you're lost. You think you're going to get a good handshake? Hey, we showed you what can happen with a handshake. Now let's see what can happen with a front wrist grab. As Sean comes in, he has my hand. He's got a two-hand front wrist grab. Boy, he's got me. This guy's holding my hand with two hands. But he's not doing anything else. So it's a redundant move. It's not doing anything. He's just holding my hand. I'm going to step forward and employ a compound move. I'm going to strike to his forearm as I come in with an upper elbow under the chin. This is going to clear my hands. As I come around, I'm going to do an elbow into his bladder. He's going to come over. I'm going to hit him, to the, hit him up higher to the solar plexus. Scoop out the groin to put him back. Come back and do what's known as a mule kick. Striking him in the chest. That's my finish. That's my takedown. I want to get rid of this person. I want to get distance away from him. And inflicting pain on him is what I want to do. He gets pain. What do I get? You got it. Pleasure. You respond to both situations. I'm not telling you to do this in a law enforcement. I'm just telling you if you have that gut feeling on the inside of that little voice talks to you. You might be right. Remember the past times you thought, boy, I just had a feeling something was going to happen. Or, hey, I knew this was going to happen good. Same thing applies here. That's self-defense. Why is it there? If you didn't have that little voice and you don't tune into it, it's not going to work for you. Comes in. Grabs. Upper elbow. Lower elbow. Upper elbow. Scoop. Drive back. Yeah, Back kick. That's what I want. That's what I got. Let's see it again on the other side. This person's grabbing us and complete finishing what is known as a physical assault. We talk about it all the time. That's when somebody touches you. Physical assault. Coming in, upper elbow, lower elbow, higher elbow, scoop off the groin, come back, yeah, hit him with a back kick, put him down. This is going to hurt. It's a powerful kick. In Kempo, this is our most powerful kick because we're using our glutes. Our glutes, yep, that's it. A big tush right there. If a person tells you they're great in martial arts, this better be hard because all your power comes from your buttocks. That's where it's applied. A person can be a black belt, earn a black belt, but if they never use it, if it doesn't look like this, that means they haven't put it on. How come? This is supposed to be an accomplishment. This is a statement to the world that you're an expert. In what? Achieving something and not going any farther? Look at the technique again. Upper. Strike. Strike low. Strike high. Scoop it out. Clear him up. Set him up. Put him down. That's what you want. You're setting up this person for a big fall. He's going to take the fall for his actions. Not your actions. His actions. Your re reaction is spontaneous. That's what you're doing. Let's look at it from the other side. Come in, upper elbow, go to the bladder, strike him in the chest, scoop out his groin, bend him up, set him up, drive him back. That's what it's all about. Let's look at it full speed. Full speed doesn't mean go as fast as you can all the time. It means go as fast as your opponent can absorb. It wouldn't make any sense if he's completely on the ground and I throw the kick over his head. Why would I do that? I have to wait till he's ready. He dictates to me where to be hit, how to be hit, and when to be hit. Very important. Speed can kill you if you can't control it. That's a little bit of power. Here we go. Up, right, strike, strike, scoop. Here he comes. Got it. Bingo. He's gone. This is mine. Speed doesn't mean fast. It means consistent. Work at the speed that your opponent can absorb. American Kempo wants you to think. Be logical and practical. Other things don't make sense. Don't be a partial martial artist. Be a full martial artist. Know what it's all about. If you're with someone that's telling you, we don't do that here, no, you can't do that, that doesn't mean anything. Why? If they can't give you an answer, you better shop around. The person you're making the investment in is you, not a studio. Yes, you. You are the studio, because if you weren't there, either would the studio. Get the best instruction you possibly can. Not the best martial artist, the best instructor. Get it. Do it. I'm proud of you.
Here we go. Up, right, strike, strike, scoop. Here he comes. Got it. Bingo. He's gone. 